Welcome to Cisco Tech Beat, the podcast that explores the people and stories behind what inspires the newest innovation. I'm your host, AB, and I'm thrilled to welcome Rajat Arora, Global Head of Networks and ITOT Infrastructure at PepsiCo. Rajat, welcome to Tech Beat. Hey, thanks, AB. Thanks for having me here. I'm so happy that we made this happen. And I know we'll talk some tech in a little bit, nothing yeah. crazy, but I want to kind of step back and ask you about your journey, um, sort of your story before Pepsi and, and how you made your way to the role that you have now. Sure. Let me just say it's been an exciting ride for me, right? I've been in this industry, in the IT industry for over 22 years mm. now. I've had technology leadership positions in the past. I've worked for Microsoft, I work for, uh, you know, uh, I work for companies like Telstra in Australia. Yeah. And uh, primarily networks. Yeah. So I've I've really built, uh, designed, and you know run and operated uh, large scale, uh, resilient networks across the board. And uh, I've learned a lot along this journey, right? And we did this for the right era, for the right time. Um, and I can tell you, the amount of change that we are witnessing today is is massive. The world of AI, the world of data, it's uh, it's super exciting. I'm nearing two and a half years now with the company now. Sure. Uh, but as I came on board, uh, I was handed over the baton to run network operations primarily to simplify and, you know, uh, efficiently run the network estate. Sure. Uh, and of course, my role has grown into into a larger, uh, I would say, larger scope now. And of course, I'm designing, building, as well as operating, delivering all of our network across the board for different sectors within PepsiCo, as well as, uh, you know, now trying to converge the IT OT layer as well, as we see a strong need and a strong case for that. PepsiCo has been an exciting uh, place to be and a, and a great company to work for. It's very purpose-driven, mission-driven, and um, yeah, I just see that uh, uh, it's just getting better from here on. So we're talking about Pepsi and we're talking about size. So let's talk about uh, scale and complexity. Just give me a little bit of insight into what that looks like globally and then how you keep things efficient across that network of, of places. Absolutely. That's a good question. Um, see, we're a large uh, F&B, CPG F&B player, right? So uh, we make, move and sell PepsiCo products. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking of uh, food and beverages both. So we have... We have lots of brands, right? right. The very popular ones, of course, is Lay's. You know, we've got Lay's. We've got PepsiCo, Pepsi right. as our core drink, right? We got the 7-Up, Gatorade, and some of the other beverages brands. Right. Um, and, of course, we're into Quaker Oats and some of the other brands. But you've got some very typical brands operating out of different countries and regions. And that brings in our spread of close to about 2,800 offices. Mm. Right, and of which 300 are manufacturing plants. Wow. Um, and you're talking of applications, 2,300 plus applic business applications that are hosted on that infrastructure. Right. That supports this kind of a landscape. So to be able to keep up with that complexity and scale, uh, we are of course transforming our network. That's the need of the art. We yep. just cannot do this all by ourselves. We've got to be focused on automation, on keeping it highly resilient, highly available you know, highly scalable and uh, making the most of AI and analytics mm -hmm. at its core, right? So we're already on that path and journey. We probably would talk about the transformation, but just to answer your question, that's how we tend to manage that scale and complexity. We're going, we're shifting left as much as possible. Right. We're organizing ourselves as best as we can so that we are much more structured than we were in the past. And we're moving away from some legacy architectures and design Right. and simplifying a lot of our network estate across the board. Sure. So that's the idea. I love that. And it's I mean it's all about networking now. You've got to have that you've got to have a robust network to make all this happen. So Absolutely, absolutely. I think we we do connect our people, our places, our things across the board. And uh, how well do we do this? How efficient do we do this? Uh, so that, you know, you can stack up other you know, initiatives and other digital initiatives on top of that uh, is what kind of we're, we're really focused on, right? And that's, that's our vision is to be able to connect it so efficiently right. uh, in an automated fashion that, you know, we're able to scale up and down as needed and we are able to have hyper-automated, you know, self-healing networks yes. across the board. Um, and we're on that path, we're on that journey. 
Love it. So let's stick on the networking theme, if you don't mind. And I would love to hear your thoughts about how you and PepsiCo are changing your approach to networking in general. Absolutely. Well, the need of the art is to change because there is going to be a lot of digital transformation across the board, not just at the network layer, yeah. but you're talking of cloud, right? So we're going big on the cloud journey. We are also trying to be inherently secured in our architecture. The cyber teams are driving that agenda. Right. Network being the foundation, we want to ensure that we are thinking for the for the future, we're thinking ahead so that we can build an architecture which is which is truly, truly apt for the AI world, right. the world of cloud, and a distributed workforce. And so in order to achieve that, we've coined a term called Network 2.0, which is purely redesigning and re-architecting our networks that are built for the new age. Right. Essentially, we're going to be working in a SASE architecture, which is secure at service edge, that allows us to connect from anywhere into any workloads, whether it's public or private workloads, in a very secured fashion. So that we don't take security separately, but we build that into this. And what it also does is it simplifies our landscape tremendously. Right. We've uh, acquired over the course a lot of tech debt. And we're trying to clean that up. We're trying to leapfrog into a very efficient modern network design that's much more lighter and leaner. Right. And it allows our workforce to operate it very efficiently because of its less complexity. Like right? it's, it's much more simpler in the way it is. Right. We're partnering with Cisco big time on that, but we also have some industry players out there that we're working in tandem to bring this new architecture to life. Right. And uh, of course, you know, AI ops, is a big thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> you got you got to <laughs> operate all of that network estate. How do you operate it in a way that it's self-healing? It's uh, AI driven. It's all data driven, and it's it's throwing insights at you, which helps you to drop down your MDTR considerably. Right, right. right. It, it self heals, and it you've got those use cases that you have to work through. So, in a nutshell, I'm saying that we're moving ahead with this new architecture, with a new way of working, structuring our teams in a way that we are now ready for the future. And we enable the bigger functions within PepsiCo, like the data and AI, right? right? Uh, our, our manufacturing um, uh, community, right. right? supply chain teams, logistics, all of that is modernized and is future ready, just because we have a much more nimble and a much more agile network at the foundation layer. Sure. Yeah, and you, you mentioned self-healing networks, and I know you touched upon the fact that Cisco technology is being employed. Um, are, are you finding specific technologies that Cisco offers that are really helping in terms of the self-healing approach? Yes, yes. Um, we're trying to be software-defined to the core. Mm. So Cisco helps us bring in the software-defined network capability to life through Catalyst Center, through NDFC, Nexus Dashboard, Fabric Controllers, in our data centers. Right. So that the data centers are much more modern. Uh, we have, and as we see it inherently in the, in the, for the, you know, we see that in the future, we're gonna see more and more of east-west traffic uh, be more prominent in our data centers. And because of that, we need a centrally managed environment. We cannot, right. uh, you know, a software defined uh, manageability needs to be abstracted completely. Um, and you have the east west traffic flowing seamlessly, right? And, and, and loads and loads of traffic because you're going to be short of, I mean, you're going to always be, be short of throughput, right? You're going to yeah. have massive pipes flowing within your data centers for that east west traffic, low latency networks, ensuring that your your AI workloads in the future, the LLM, uh, uh, you know, workloads that are going to run in the future, they are going to be huge yeah. network intensive. Um, you're talking of massive GPUs running in that That's environment. Right. So your your backbone, your your data centers have to be modernized. So in that space, Cisco helps us really big time, right? Sure. Being software defined, but also in the field sites and the campus and enterprise networking. We see the wireless space. There's the wireless 6E standards that we're bringing on, the Wi-Fi 7, we're testing some of that stuff already. That's going to modernize 
our connectivity yeah. across the board within our field sites. I can tell you that at the van layer, we're bringing in the SD van solution from Cisco, which is, which again is, uh, you know, a very intelligent way of managing your van sure. and your transport layer, uh, so that you could connect into multiple environments and, uh, you know, in a very automated way, in a very intelligent way, you're able to route all of that. So, yeah, those, those are a few of the things that we are leveraging Cisco for. And uh, sure. Uh, Yes, it's not, it's nice to hear that these technologies are working. It's great. It's, 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 that's, yeah. that's good news for us too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean there there we the, the good thing is AB. I can tell you we work very closely with the Cisco team. Yeah, we partner with them in this journey of innovation because these are testing times and these are demanding times. I can understand that as a customer we are really demanding. We want innovation to be at the at the realms, right? And so they're partnering very closely with us to bring in to live some of these capabilities and improving and continuous improvement cycles are on. So uh, yeah, it's it's good to be partnering with Cisco on that. As I said, uh, we're 90% plus Cisco shop, right? Mm. Uh, so it is quite natural for us to be, you know, yeah, Lock step with them that's in, right. in this journey. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. There's been a lot of talk about the importance of IT and the OT convergence. So. Can you just paint a picture as to why this is a, a hot topic? Well, that's a very good question, first of all. Let me tell you that uh, we're on that path of converging IT and OT simply because we got to be data driven as an organization. And we got to enable initiatives like smart manufacturing, digital twin in our warehouses. In order to do all of that, your foundational layer of network and compute has to be standardized. Mm. Our plants today have that, but I would say in pockets and bits and pieces. It's right. not a unified, standardized approach that's run as a capability across the board. And so we're on this path, on this journey, we realize the importance of unifying the IT stack and the OT stack and sharing some overlap and intersections so that we can be seamless, as seamless as possible. Uh -huh. Today, we these two are different stacks, right? And they don't seemingly talk well with each other. And that's that's an industry reality. Uh, it's not an easy thing to manage, right? It's, it's just sheer complexity. Yeah. So we're reimagining this layer of IT and OT, bringing in newer standards, newer archetype solutions that will enable data to flow in and out of our factories, you know, seamlessly hmm. and be processed at the edge. So what we're trying to do is we're not just enabling these innovations in the cloud, but we're trying to bring that cloud closer to our factories. Got it. In order to do that, we got to have the edge compute layer, a very smart edge compute layer that processes that data real time. Okay. And I'll give you some examples to this, right? Our factories in a, in a Lays plant, you know, we have, we're, we're really passionate about the quality of our product. Right, The Absolutely. way it looks, the way it tastes and all of that. So there's, there's constant vigilance and monitoring and video monitoring that's happening to ensure that we make some real-time decisions around the quality of the, of the product, right. the end product. And in order to enable all of that, the data has to flow in and out of that infrastructure, right? And be processed. Right. So unless you unless you build low latency, high throughput networks that are secured inherently by design, but also processed at the edge, right? I don't think we'll be able to do that well enough. So we realize that's just the beginning and the start of it. There's a host of innovation that's coming up in the smart manufacturing space in the industry 4.0 framework. Right. And as we bring that to life, it's absolutely crucial for us to, you know, have a more unified architecture and design at the network and compute layer. Right. So that it is, again, it's governed well, the processes work, and, uh, you know, you, you have heightened observability. Mm -hmm. You run your, uh, your life cycle management of the equipment efficiently. Right. Right. Some of the stuff that was missing all this while. Right. So we right. see that there's a there's a strong case for it. And uh, yeah, we're just making an honest attempt and we hope to take this forward. 
Love it. I'm curious as to the challenges, both from a plant perspective and even organizationally you face when you're dealing with uh, whether it's, you know, building a new facility, updating an old facility, or just the general day of business uh, right. adventures that you have to go through. It's an interesting point you touch on, A.B. Um, so as I spoke about the ITOD convergence, uh, you know, as a part of which uh, we're required to standardize our ITOT layer within these factories. So we're required to do uh, uh, an assessment yeah. across the board and then potentially see if the proof of value, a proof of concept works out and we move forward, right? So we've picked up a plant in Mexico. I'm required to be there uh, talking with some of the supply teams and some of the other sector teams and then, you know, build it up from there. Uh, to me, the bigger challenge or an opportunity area would be the organizational change management part yeah, of it, absolutely. the OCM, uh, which plays a crucial role. Uh, while we have, we are still ironing out the overall design and architecture and our gold standard from a solution standpoint, we also want to make sure that we take all of the other stakeholders and parties along with us in this journey. So it's absolutely crucial for us to network, to make sure people are understanding the course, the, the purpose, the vision behind this move. Right. Um, and yeah, we're, we're, we're truly excited about it, right? We, we feel this would unlock a lot of other newer capabilities and modernize our plants uh, to the next level, right? So yeah, it's, it's on. We're, we're super excited about it. Yeah, it's an exciting time to to be where you are now to see these changes through. And yeah, I can I can imagine. Well, Rajat, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. I'm so glad we made this happen and I really appreciate your time. Oh, absolutely, Abby. It was uh, it was wonderful, right? It was a great experience chatting with you and uh, talking about the world of networks, uh, which of course I'm very passionate <laughs> about. You can you can almost make out. Uh, but yeah, it was it was just wonderful being here and uh, thank you so much. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. <laughs>